in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Hello, Didier. Hey, Carsten. <laughs> to our next uh, episode of the Hyper-V Amigo show, showcast session. And uh, today we are not talking about Weem Backup and Replication 9.5 Update 4 that we, we announced that in the last showcast. But we got our hands on some exciting stuff and we want to um, to use this chance to talk about it uh, as long as we, we can show it. So, Didier, we are talking about what here? Well, persistent memory support uh, that has come to Hyper-V even in Windows Server 2019, and that's kind of awesome because now we can do super, well, let's say, ridiculous speed inside <laughs> of the VM. Yes. I don't know how to call it. Yeah, and so, I, I saw uh, some tweets of uh, of you, and I retweeted them, of course, with ridiculous <laughs> numbers. So yes, I hope we are. can produce them here in the showcase. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I would be like, uh, let's let's try, right? So <laughs> okay. We all know who you are, I guess, right? Yeah, I'm I'm Carsten from Germany, doing a lot of uh, community work, like the Hyper-V Amigos showcast with my friend Didier, uh, and also doing a conference in Germany that's coming up soon in May, um, uh, I think 21, 21st and 22nd of May. And Didier, you are a speaker there, right? Yeah, yes. I'm going to yeah. speak about something that's related, actually, to this subject, uh, yeah. indirectly, but... Yeah. Uh, if you if you want to come and attend the the conference, please do. Please yeah. join my session. If you're bored, there are many other sessions, so you, there's no <laughs> risk for you at all. And if you want to read more about what I'm up to, there's my blog, my Twitter handle. So uh, yeah. let's stop talking about us and dive in. Yeah. So what is what is persistent memory? Well, the text is on the screen, but basically it is something that combines the benefits of memory, which is very fast and very low latency combined with the benefits of flash, which is the fact that you can persist data. So the memory, we like it because it's as fast as you can get today, but the problem is, well, it's volatile, right? It's gone. So we want it to be able, we want to have the ability to persist it, and that's basically what persistent memory offers us. Uh, now, what makes it great? Well, fast, it's ultra low latency, and it's persistent. It's what we've always wanted. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Even if, if you, you want storage, want. right? If you want to store data there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's, we, we're like spoiled children, right? I remember how enthusiastic it was when I got my hands on my first NVMEs, and it was like, woohoo, woohoo. And, and now it's like, oh, ah, this is slow, right? <laughs> <laughs> you were mocking me about some numbers I posted and mocking other people mocking on Twitter. You. I'm not yes, you on were. I'm you were quite jealous. jealous. You are saying. I'm quite uh, <laughs> Counting, <laughs> counting IOPS in millions here, my friend. <laughs> so there is some okay. tension here. Huh? <laughs> no, no, yeah. uh, but this is great, and uh, it's it's new in Windows Server 2019. Um, no, it's well, not really true. It was no. there in the semi semi annual updates, right? It's it was also in 2000, yeah. But the, the the big thing with 2019 is it's now supported in the guests of Hyper-V. Okay, that's new. Okay, that's cool have it on your host for SQL Server, for example, DAX, but now inside of a VM. Okay, so, that's good. Cool. Uh, but there is a little of confusion, uh, persistent memory. Uh, some people are very, uh, let's say, uh, uh, sensitive to this, so let's let's try and not insult anybody. I'll try not to, but please don't shoot me <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I mix it up. Yeah. Uh, basically, there are two you've got persistent memory and you've got storage class memory. And persistent memory is best defined perhaps by an example that it's non-volatile DIM. So basically it's a combination of the, the memory, the DRAM with, with the nonce, the flash, to deliver that persistent storage in, in, a, in a memory slot uh, form factor. So that, that has a little controller, it has the memory and it has the flash bits. And uh, actually everything is done in memory. But if you lose the power, if you should sh shut down the server, if the server blue screens, it's battery and the data will be persisted to the flash. 
out of the memory. Mm -hmm. Now, if you boot the server, everything comes back up. There's a check for the health, of course, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then the the data from that uh, flash can be put back into the memory, and hey, you're running again. So it's extremely fast, and it's very low latency. But as you can imagine, uh, today we don't have uh, a five terabyte or a ten terabyte uh, NVIDIA yet. So that's uh, perhaps the limitation there. So there are small, then small form factors. You said here at, sixteen. At, at 32 well, not the, form, not the form factor. The form factor is a dim, but the capacity is water, water that's, limited. That's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you like like memory dims, you have the same yeah. size, right? Yeah. Basically. Storage class memory, same deal. Uh, it combines memory with flash NANDs to achieve uh, the same goal, but in a different way. Basically, the memory, the DRAM, is used as a caching uh, layer or a caching tier, so to speak, uh, in front of a, which is the the flash. Mm -hmm. So it is also very, very fast, and the latency is also very low, but uh, the latency is uh, measurably bigger than with uh, persistent memory, the non-volatile DIMMs. Now, what is measurable doesn't mean it makes a difference. It all depends on your use case. The big deal here is, of course, that the capacities are higher from the start. Right, yeah. and there's there's two other there's there's one other important thing, uh, the non-volatile memory to work, uh, you need to have the BIOS uh, support for it and the configuration in the BIOS, and also the operating system needs to be aware of this. Mm -hmm. Whilst with a storage class memory, uh, there is no hard requirement, and I'm very special in what I'm saying here. There is no hard requirement for special BIOS configurations or operating system support. So you could just plug it in and, and use it, mm -hmm. right? But so there, there's one one thing I would like to add. Because... In real life, is another is another okay. case. Okay, so in the moment we we can buy the NVDIMs, right? Uh, the storage the class ends. Yeah, the ends. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the storage class memory, um, Intel talks a lot about storage class memory, and we saw at Ignite also a new record with storage bases direct. They had storage class memory in front of NVMEs, but this yep. was this is not viable yet because it depends on a new processor, a uh, new processor generation by Intel, and that will come yep. out this year, I think very soon, but yep. nowadays is especially the 3D X, X point uh, uh, storage class memory is is not available to buy yet. Yeah. And VDIMs you'll find on the big OEMs, their websites. If you yeah. configure a server, you can put it in. Uh, the good thing is also if you don't enable it as uh, as non-volatile memory, it just shows up as normal memory. Okay. So it's uh, so. Yeah. Cool. But uh, as long. We 3D X point because 3D X point isn't isn't just your regular flash or NAND. It's it's a lot better. Uh, how much better depends on uh, who you're asking. Some people are a bit disappointed because they got promised a thousand times better, and maybe it isn't a thousand times, but a hundred times better, but still, you know, <laughs> it's, it's significant. Uh, but also that name comes back in a lot of uh, the offerings. So let's take a look. It, when we talk about uh, persistent memory, this is it, right? The Intel obtained data center persistent memory, the, the memory module form factor, that's what we're talking about because there's also this. This is also Intel Optane, the, the nice name. It's mm -hmm. not the same as the data center persistent memory. It's also very fast. It's not it's not your normal 3D NANDs, right? It's, it's different. Uh, it has all the benefits that Intel says, so, uh, a lot longer endurance of the device uh, and a lot better performance. That's that's what they offer with this. This this is what you can get today. You can buy this. Mm -hmm. You even have small obtain modules you can put, stick in front of a of a hard disk drive to speed it up. Uh, but this is not what we're talking about when we talk about persistent memory. And then when you look at NVDIMS, the green one, the NVDIMS is the standard today, which you can buy. Uh, it has a battery uh, battery as a as a backup system. So what you need to remember is the 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 DRAM is mapped to the system. The flash itself is only for the backup. But if you look at it, you have one to ten tens of gigabytes, which is true. Uh, but the latency. You're talking the tens of nanoseconds, which is okay. like the best you can have at the moment. Of course, we talked about the battery, and the interface is defined by a committee. Now, there's two other specifications. The other, the, the, the second one is the NVDIMS, uh, which is a bit uh, defined by the vendors how 
but there they uh, actually are going to use the flash as uh, to be mapped to the system instead of the RAM. So okay. the good news there is that it potentially can be a lot larger, hundreds of gigabytes to X terabytes. Uh, but as you can see, you're immediately talking about tens of microseconds in latency instead mm. of nanoseconds. Yeah. And then there's uh, something new in the making coming with DDR5, potentially, probably when, I have no clue, you know, how this goes. It's announced, there's a lot of fuzz and buzz, but sometimes it takes one more year or two more years for it to appear. But things are moving and there's a lot of innovation every, going on everywhere and when things will go to the market, we don't know. But the NVDIM M's you can get. The nice things about the P is that they would combine the best of the both worlds. So they will give you the what the M does as well as what the F does. So you will have uh, the large capacity with a latency that is uh, in the hundreds of nan nanoseconds. So it's okay. in, somewhere in between these. But I think this is what they will need to compete with something like uh, Intel's uh, 3DX point to the, the Optane data center, mm -hmm. right? Because otherwise they, they will never play in the capacity uh, business. And that capacity, of course, is also important, not just the speed. Uh, NVDIMs, they look a bit like this. These are pictures I found from different vendors. This one is Dell. One of them is uh, Micron. And this is actually a picture of the Dell back battery pack that you can see, I okay. think I put it in here. Uh, so the battery pack basically is attached to the memory, the controller here of that NVDIM that will take everything that's in memory and put it in the NAND flash when uh, the power is uh, cut off, mm -hmm. either in accident. Uh, and this is actually a picture of a server, a uh, Dell server, where you can see the, the battery pack in the, in the, the chassis. Uh, well, one thing to know about that battery and the behavior of Windows is when the battery is dead or it's not functioning properly, what happens to your to your NVDIMs? Do they still work? Well, basically, yes. You can still read and write to them by default. Okay. The, the big risk there is if something goes wrong, even just shutting down the server, I mean, restarting for your monthly updates, I don't know, blue screen, just whatever, whatever the reason, well, it's lost. And okay. depending on what's on there, that would be that could be a very bad thing. You yes. don't want to use the, you don't want to use the log lose the log to your database, right? So what you can also do is add a registry key in uh, under local machine system current control set in services. There's persistent memory key over there, and you can add a value. You set it to one, and it says read only on persistence loss. So when the battery doesn't work, then it becomes a read only. So it's a protection mechanism. It's a bit like a, a modern storage infrastructure, a lot of sands, when you reach capacity or there is another issue, they can make your uh, lungs read only to protect yourself, that you don't corrupt data because there's no more room or there's another issue with it. Okay. So you can you can tweak this with the registry key. If they're gonna make this default or not in the future, I don't know, but it's good to know that if the battery fails, you're hunky-dory until you lose power, right? So, but uh, the system has to know that the battery is dead. So there has to be some. Oh yeah, but that's that's the entire bias thing, right? The hardware has to be aware of it. The okay. BIOS needs to support this because you have to configure this all in the BIOS. Uh, uh, but let's first talk about why we care about all this, because if we look at the day, our caches on the on the CPUs, this is about our our memory. We talk about 100 nanoseconds. Uh, and these numbers seem to vary by the year or by the vendor that talks about them. This is yeah. a table I, I took from Microsoft. But it's just to give you a relative idea about the difference in speed. So this is basically where we are today. This is where we get when we have, uh, let's say, uh, up the uh, obtains, I guess. And somewhere between the memory and this level, there is this opportunity, as they call it, for the persistent memory to shine. Mm -hmm. Basically marrying the best of the both worlds. That's very nice latency combined with the persistence. Now, uh, why would you want to do that? Well, you know, everybody ever says, but why 
anything else anymore if I got 64 gigs of RAM and I've got an NVMe disk and I've got eight cores in my in my workstation I'll be fine for the rest of my life but then life happens we progress we evolve mm -hmm. and uh, it's always the same story look at this uh, little uh, statistics from the 2017 from Seagate I mean it's like this is now 2019 90% of all the data in the world we have created in the past two years. And this is how they see this evolve in the next six years. It's like, holy crap. Right? And then there's uh, this enormous need to analyze data, to, to churn data, to, yeah. to, to, pro to do big data analytics, to have relational databases uh, churn to vast amount of data we could never have imagined. Then there's all these initiatives around scale-out storage, HCI in the cloud. So they have a tremendous need for uh, enormous amounts of data, move them around, read, write as fast as possible. People are working with in-memory databases more than ever to handle all that stuff. So basically the need is evolving along with the ability, right? It, it's, it's, it's this constant, evolution of of uh, capabilities which drives new needs and no well, that's how we progress so basically that's why we're interested in it uh, and if you think about it that's why we're also interested in rdma because the fabrics are becoming very very low latency and that of course is driven by the fact that the storage is becoming very fast yeah. and very low latency uh, your 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 let's say your 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 daddy's or your granddaddy's uh, storage can't handle that anymore, or, or fabrics can't handle that anymore. Be careful! Now, I'm not be saying, careful I'm, here. I'm, we I'm are granddaddies, saying, huh? I could be granddaddy. <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, but that's not that's not to say that those types of storage today don't have a value anymore. Uh, very intensively by a lot of of, uh, of people but there is an evolution and uh, it's like I, I always say all the new stuff is not just replacing uh, the old stuff uh, like this no there's always new capabilities new opportunities new possibilities coming but uh, the, the the existing stuff will be used for quite a long time uh, even longer than many people would like to see it used because it would be so great if you could dump everything we have move to the new tough stuff and forget about everything no. but you know it's kind of expensive and impossible to do uh but we care because we have the hardware we have this evolution in in networking that we go to 100 gigabits and in, in the future more we have the very performance servers very high speed memory we've got not just ssds anymore we've got nvmes we also have the nvdims now the and perhaps this is a picture of uh, the Intel uh, Optane, the storage class memory type. So it's all there, and we're going to leverage it. So we're going to walk it, walk you through it now. How do you, how do you make it uh, available? Actually, yeah. it's quite easy. I was surprised. I, I was like, oh, this can't, I, I must be missing something. So let's do it. Well, you go into your BIOS. It's a Dell system, so that's what you're seeing here. So when you boot into the BIOS, you can say, hey, I want to go to memory settings. And in memory settings, you have this entry now called persistent memory, right? So if you click on that, you'll find all kinds of settings here. Some settings are for all the memory dims, or some of them are individually per dim. But what we do is, of course, we turn it on because we want to use it. Mm. Otherwise, mm. it would just show up as, as ordinary memory, which we don't want. We want to use it as a non-volatile dip. Uh, we want to make it, we want to write something to it, right? Otherwise, we could set it to read-only. And then, no, it's not exactly, if you want persistence, what you want. Memory scrubbing, it's on auto. Then we said, uh, we don't, we of course disable factory reset and erase because that's also not what we want. We want to, when we reboot our server, we want the data to be there, not wiped. Uh, the battery status here is present ready. So that means it's functional, which is absolutely great. Uh, NVDIM interleave, that's a kind of interesting one. If you disable it, every little uh, NVDIM memory module will be available as a region from which you can create persistent storage in your host and in your VM. If you interleave them, they combine into one region, mm -hmm. and then you have larger capacities. We'll show you that, uh, and that's about it. And of course, uh, if you change something, you get a warning. Yeah. 
interesting. That means uh, in my, I was thinking now of maybe a rate zero over multiple uh, dims like that to get more yeah, storage. Well, you, could, you could, you could, you could, you could use that analogy, and that rate zero analogy is very good for one other reason. Yeah. Because this is this has no protection. If you if you yeah. have interleaved your NVDIMs and one of them fails, yeah, your data is gone. Okay. Okay, gone. I get it. Okay. Yeah. So, of oh, course, the well. warning is if you change something here, you might shoot yourself in the foot and destroy data. So they're mm -hmm. warning you, don't play with this without knowing what you're doing. But then, of course, once you've done that and you boot your server into Windows Server 2019 and you hop over to your device manager, you'll see something in there that's called memory devices. And the server we were playing with has six of, oh, has six of those. One, two, three, four, six DIMMs, yeah. right? So if you do get a PMEM physical device, what you will see is six DIMMs. Mm -hmm. I get shell it. commands. You yeah. Can, yeah. Okay, then you say get a PMEM unused region, and you'll also see six. Mm -hmm. So you get the clue here, right? We've got six NVDIM devices and six regions, yeah. which means actually interleaving here is disabled. They yeah. are not combined into one region. So now we want to make disks of it because if you look on the left side here, you see the memory devices, but there's no persistent memory disk yet. So mm -hmm. what we do is we grab all the unused regions and we pipe that into the new PMEM disk uh, commandlet. We say atomicity type none here. We'll uh, talk about what that means later. And as you can see, it starts creating disks, all six of them, one per region. Mm -hmm. Again, interleaving is disabled. And if we then do get uh, PMEM uh, disk, we will see some. Before, we didn't see any. And now they also show up in device manager. Yeah. So, memory disks. Cool. Now, remember that we could enable interleave, right? So that's what we do. So again, if you do get PMEM physical device, you will still see your six NVDIM modules. Mm -hmm. There's still six, but they are combined into their single region. So there's three in the region one and there's three in region two. Basically, that's per processor. Yeah, it's a NUMA node, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So Three of them go into one. So instead of, you still have the same number of devices, mm -hmm. but you have two regions because you've combined them. You've interleaved them, right? So now we just do the same thing. We, we say get PMEM unused region and we pipe it into new PMEM disk and they get created. If you now do get PMEM disk, you'll see two disks instead of six. And you'll see that every disk physical devices due to the interleaving. And that's what you also see here oh, in, the, at the, in the left in the uh, device manager. And the nice thing is device manager says it's interleaved. Mm -hmm. If you go back one, it didn't say that over here. Yeah. So you can see quite easily either by looking at the number of physical devices via the PowerShell or in the GUI, mm -hmm. you can see that it's interleaved. So, so Didier, one small question. Um, you use yeah. atomic type one, but in the screenshot you have atomic type block translated table. Is that an error? Yeah. Or? That's not an error. I've I've used I've I've used screenshots of of multiple of of both. Yeah. Uh, block translation table is basically uh, a mechanism where where you get uh, protection against torn pages. Okay. It's a bit like a good a good storage controller can do that as well. Uh, now, some people say this uh, this is perhaps not what you want to do. I'm still hoping to to Microsoft where and when you want to use non versus block translation table. Uh, but basically, it, it helps protect uh, against data corruption. Okay, cool. It probably comes at a cost of speed and performance, but uh, when to use it, where to use it, uh, it's all very new. And we're still learning well, along with you, right? Mm. So I, I still need to figure out when when this makes the most sense and yeah, when not. True. So let's jump ahead. Uh, as you know, we've just seen us create those two interleaved uh, PMEM disks, right? Mm -hmm. with, uh, with each of those has uh, three modules and VDIM and modules. Well, if you grab them either via get physical disk or via get disk and you say the bus type is storage class memory 
right? You will see both of them show up and you have a new media type here. It, and I can imagine that some people will now say, but it's not storage class memory, it's persistent memory, it's an NVDIN, <laughs> you just, do, I, I know, I know, you know. <laughs> you, have, you have to give things a name, so things yeah. get a name. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But it's storage, it's there, you can yeah. see it. I got 48 gigabytes because the modules are 16 gigabytes, right? So but, uh, when I do them. But it's important that you get a different media type because if you have NVMEs and SSDs, you get a media type of SSD. Only the bus type is different here. So we can't combine uh, as capacity uh, devices, we can't combine NVMEs and SSDs in a, a mirror accelerated parity uh, uh, virtual disk, but with uh, this storage class memory or PMEMS, we can do that. Oh, so, by the way, well, whilst we're talking about that sort of stuff, uh, the interleaving, maybe we said, yeah, or fail, the modules fails, you lose the data. Well, if you would leverage these in storage spaces, yeah, well, you can you can make them mirrored. Yeah. You can use interleave because you have you have then multiple copies on different systems. That's great, right? There we there we go. Yeah, and you, yeah. And you can have multiple 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 disk clients. You can have two NVMEs and uh, have uh, high availability that way. Yeah, right? it's true. Really, I yeah, I like the idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe we do something than, about that later. Maybe I get my yeah. head also on uh, some stuff. Okay, but other yeah. other than that. It's a normal disk, so we initialize the yeah. disk. Yeah. We took disk six here as an example. We give it a partition child, GPT, of course. Uh, we do a new partition. We take the disk number. We say, use all the, all the space you can find. Give it a drive letter. Format the volume. Give it a label. And we say, is DAX is true. So we are now saying. What, what is, is DAX? <laughs> is DAX. Right. That's 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 uh, when the the application is able to consume uh, the the persistent memory directly without going to the file system. Okay. Okay. So it's NTFS only, by the way. Yeah. So, but is the access to? It's not block level. Okay. Right? It's really consuming the storage space a lot faster, a lot a lot uh, easier. Easier or easier or with less overhead, context switches, all that. Let's say all the overhead that we've had over history to talk to storage through a file system. That's a lot of a lot of the magic going on there with the caching and everything is is to hide for a fact or to give you the impression of speed. Yeah. Now you don't need the impression of speed anymore. The speed is there, mm -hmm. so that so all those uh, all those layers, so to speak, are are just slowing you down. So that, uh, and, and SQL Server can use that, right? They can use it to put the log on there and, and talk to that log incredibly fast. Yeah. So if you've done that, but if you want to, use, if you want to consume the, the storage, uh, the, the PMEM on, uh, in a, inside a VM, you just use DAX because you don't need to consume this on the host. You're going to consume it. In this example, we're talking about Hyper-V, we're going to consume it inside of Hyper-V. So we just, uh, Make sure that that it's uh, partitioned or formatted with the is DAX is true, and then we're there. So it's a DAX volume. Yeah. Okay. Right. And this is only NTFS, by the way. So it's not REFS. Yeah. So, so that's okay. this, is, this is what you have done. It's stated there on the host to present the devices. Okay. Yeah, on the host. So now I have a use. Now I can actually see the volume on the host. It even has a drive letter. Mm -hmm. Right, and with uh, with FSUtil, I can ask for the information about that volume, and then it will say is DAX is, is DAX volume. If it wasn't the DAX volume, that wouldn't be there. Yeah. Okay. But what can I do? Well, I'm gonna create a virtual disk on that DAX volume. So it's only generation two VMs, mm -hmm. and we've got this new VHD persistent memory extension. Which, if you use it in a in a new VHD command, will create you uh, a virtual PMEM disk. Uh, it has to be created on NTVS DAX volume, which yeah. we just created. we've taken care of that, and it can only be a fixed uh, size disk at the moment. So no and dynamic. There, there is no option for that. It's just the name of the of the virtual disk is uh, VHD PMEM, and that's all you need, right? That's what you know from VHD and VHDX as well. Right. True. What what makes what makes true. a virtual no, disk VHDX? Yeah, exactly. Now when you say it, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 
it's to anybody working with Hyper-V, they should be very recognizable. New VHD. Yeah. On my P volume, my DAX volume, I create a disk. It's a VHD PEM disk. It's a PMEM disk. It's fixed size and it's 30 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. Because I left some space, I didn't consume it all. But look at this little uh, virtual disk. Logical sector size, physical sector size. Okay, it yeah. creates a 4K native disk. Yeah. Right? Interesting to know. Now, next steps are PowerShell only. What you can do to a standard normal virtual machine, you know, we have a genuine, gen, uh, Generation 2 Windows Server 2019 virtual machine, and it's running perhaps on a SAN, perhaps on S2D, perhaps on a standalone Hyper-V host, it doesn't matter, but it's Generation 2, it has a bootable OS, it could have one or multiple data, data partitions volumes, but now we are going to add a volume. Uh, to it with uh, that that is mapped as a virtual persistent uh, uh, so but to do that we need to add a virtual persistent memory controller mm -hmm. and we add it to a VM and the VM is called PMEM VM you can add only one by the way one P VMEM controller not multiple once you have that controller you're gonna add a virtual hard disk drive to the VM the VM is called PMEM and then I say I want to map it to the PMEM controller I just created. There's only one, and this is the name. Okay. Okay. That's, 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 the, that's something you have to wrap your head around. You add it. You say to what VM. It has a name. Add uh, a disk. You say the controller location. You take one, of course. That's where you start. And you give it the path of your newly created virtual PMEM disk, right? And that's it. You you know this. You know this. This this is not very new. The only thing new is that now you have a different type of controller. My guess why they did this is that this thing is probably not limited by uh, any configuration around, uh, uh, let's say, fair scheduling for this I/O. I think this thing gets everything at once. Okay, <laughs> that's my guess. So I have a question. So I think they create. Yeah, um, I think I assume you can't uh, boot from a PMEM disk, right? It's, it's no. just another disk. Like, okay. Yeah, it's not meant to be. Well, maybe you could, but uh, you didn't try it. I didn't try it, and I think it might not be the wisest use yeah, of and, your. Yeah, yeah, I think if you use the FSU uh, till, there should be bootable or something like that. That's. Uh, we could, we could go back and look at that. Uh, when you do the F, FSU yeah. tool, it we was, can play with that later. It's just That's a question, it. but I assume it's not possible. But yeah. I have to yeah. ask, of course, right? I probably don't think so. But, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, this is something you can only do when the machine is shut down. So this yeah, is not course. live. Yeah. Okay. So inside of the virtual machine, if you log on, you run get disk where bus type is SCM, you will see one because mm -hmm. you just added one here. And then you can format it, and you can start using it. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I am formatting it here with NTFS, and I'm not saying is DAX true, so it's a normal NTFS machine, because I'm going to use uh, I.O. meter to create some I.O., and I don't, uh, I don't have a SQL Server running to do DAX or something. Right? Mm -hmm. So I just formatted it, and so now it's usable. So. Optimal workloads, 4K. It's a 4K native disk. Yeah. Uh, 24 workers here. It's 100% sequential, and uh, playing around a bit, letting it run for a while, it levels out at one uh, one and a half million IOPS. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I mean, I was like, I, was, I, 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 I like this. I'm like, I like, this is not even DAX. Yeah, the best I, I got so far from, from, from a VM fleet in a VM was 150,000 8K IOPS. Uh, I think yeah. 70, 30. So maybe we can do, uh, we can do that benchmark too. When you, so then I have a comparison of what, uh, to the stuff I do yeah. usually, usually yeah. would be nice, but, but I, I, I have a tenth of that on an all NVMe storage basis direct setup. So this but, is yeah, but, one but it gets, machine it gets on one better. Host. 
it gets it's, better. What do you mean it gets better? It gets better because <laughs> it's 4K, it's 24 workers. And read 100% sequential. DJ, you are just manipulating this thing to give us a nice number of IOPS. Of course yes. I am. <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course. Now let's let's do something else. Let's do 8K and do 24 workers, but now do 70% read, 30% write. That's nearly my sequential. that's nearly my workload, DJ. And that's 30% <laughs> random, right? Look at it. <clears throat> hmm. That's nice. It's nice. What's the difference? Doesn't make that much difference, does it? No. It's like, wow. I'm like, wow. And I'm like, wow. And I said, gosh, we need to do a, a Hyper-V yeah, movie show called yeah. I look at it. Yeah, it's cool. I'm totally enthusiastic. I'm, 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 of course, I'm addicted now. <coughs> I'm totally addicted now. So I'm your next storage is all SCM. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know <laughs> Just and, and I don't want anybody that, right? to talk to me with in-memory databases. That's my new big gig here. It's like, what are we talking about? No, in-memory I mean, I.O. meter. <laughs> That's the workload. For this stuff. <laughs> Not databases. Come on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, databases are very important still. My when friend. do you so, want to do a demo? Now or just uh, go nah, oh, nah, through nah, the slides? <laughs> I'm going to save it for you. Yeah. Okay. Some other interesting tidbits. Uh, there's things they've changed in 2019 versus 2016 or the SACs, uh, the SAC releases. Uh, if you start looking now at the memory devices, you will see that they are uh, controlled and managed by a driver called NVDIMSYS. Mm -hmm. At a given point, they were talking about NVDIM-NSYS, but that seems to have disappeared. It's just NVDIM now. Uh, if you look at the persistent memory disk device, you will see two uh, drivers managing this, partition manager and P. And those two actually are controlled by the uh, storage class memory bus driver. Okay. And these, right, this one controls the creation and the management of these two. And this is this is why your BIOS needs to support this and your operating system needs to support this. But the good news is they used to have different types of drivers for all kinds of, I think, persistent memory storage. Now it seems to be uh, uh, standardizing on the same uh, uh, drivers so that if you get another type of DIM, mm -hmm. probably it will be the same same, same driver handling it. So it's all done by the PMEM sys and this one. I do not know if you put in another one, if you see, do you, would you see something like storage class sys here or not? Yeah. Probably not. I guess it will be all of them. And then I think they, 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 they used one everywhere. So you've got persistent memory, you've got NVDIM, you've got storage, uh, 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 storage, storage class memory. memory yeah. So you have, you have all three of them, so everybody should be okay, or if everybody is angry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting to look at that sort of stuff to see how it works, right? Yeah. So the BIOS, the the system driver from the operating system, goes into the into the SCM bus driver. Then you have these two. This one controls the the so the, sorry the the the, the NVDIM sys controls the memory devices, which you actually use. Because they deliver the regions, and those regions they are at the end turned into persistent memory disks you can mm -hmm. consume in your host and in your uh, VM by creating a, a virtual persistent memory disk. So that's kind of cool to look at that sort of stuff. Devices in your device manager, you'll find that SCM bus over there. So that's something you'll uh, you'll see. That's something I didn't have before. That's new to me. I always like that Microsoft is so. You know, time correct with the date, right? <laughs> Every driver they have was written like it's like you've had this for 13 years and you're only giving it to us now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. I don't know why is that. <laughs> okay, of course, uh, uh, some extra information. Only generation two VMs, mm. uh, Windows or Linux, as long as the OS supports it, it's okay. I have no beef with that. I think this is about performance, and generation one VMs are about backward compatibility. So I like, I'm good. You're no, good. No, no complaints. It's only VHDXs. Yeah. 
So, well, VHD PAM, PMAMs actually. In yeah, case. but uh, when you stated it, it was uh, it was known as a VHDX. Uh, Generation two uh, handles VHDXs. So that's that's cool with me. Uh, no. But you said it's so VHD PMAM. Uh, yeah. Interesting fact: you can convert between VHDX and VHD PMAM with yeah. convert VHD. That's nice to know. You can select the atomicity at creation time. We talked about that uh, before, right? The 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 do you want this or don't you want this? Uh, protection against torn pages mm -hmm. or not? Uh, again, I'm still waiting for some documentation guidance when when to use it, when not to use it. Advantages, disadvantages. The protection is nice. It must have some kind of impact, impact or you yeah. wouldn't be able to to select another option, right? Yeah. Uh, so we need to figure out what that is all about. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it can be mounted on the host just like you can do with a uh, with a VHX. So over the SCSI controller, so you can actually read and write to it, mm -hmm. like a like a, a VHD or VHX, which is kind of interesting. So those are nice to know stuff. Uh, so you can do docs or uh, you can ETD. do block 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 level, right? So this is nice. Uh, there is in 2019 also a new large uh, page support, which is kind of interesting because uh, this is where where things have gone. Uh, let's say have, have been have been evolving. Uh, a, pro, uh, a processor works in uh, two megabyte uh, chunks. memory pages, memory pages. chunks, right? And if your if your uh, uh, page size used by your by your file system also does this because that's interesting. If you look at 2019, you go to NTFS format, it goes way beyond 64K. It goes to two megabytes now. Mm, okay. Ah, so th there's a relationship there. The the the, the large the, there's a table to translate the 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 4K. What is it? 4K. Uh, or the 2 MB, the 2 MB in the uh, in the processor to to the actual uh, pages in the operating system, and they're already talking about I think jumbo sized or humongous sized uh, pages like one gigabit in the future. So things are happening there, mm -hmm. uh, and the, and the trick is because all that mapping between the processor and the memory of the OS that is a lot of overhead. So uh, think about it as cluster sizes on a, on, on a yeah. disk. Uh, if you can minimize the amount you need to read and write, it's optimal. In memory, it's the same. So what they are trying to do is reduce the number of IOs, basically, to, to map those two. So don't just get rid of all that overhead. Uh, it's quite interesting stuff. Uh, but th now we come to the things I don't like. No support for live migration. Because it's a local Hello. device, right? Uh, yes, but uh, you can work around that, and that was that's what VRMware is doing. Okay. So they've got this working in Azure. Okay. So <laughs> I'm waiting for this to be lit up on premises, right? And they have to lit it up, light it up on premises because if you want your storage stack one day or sooner or later to support this, you want the same experience as you have in Azure Public Cloud, right? So I think I think it will come, but it's not there yet. Right? We also don't have support for production checkpoints for backup, which is kind of. Mm -hmm. We don't have okay because they don't have an HVHDPM. PM. Why <laughs> is it coming? Is it not coming? I don't know. I have no clue. It, uh, have a, I have an idea. We are soon in Redmond, right? Something to talk about with. Oh about. yes. Yeah. We're we in contact. We can't talk about that. It's NDA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we will ask at least. <laughs> well, judging on the on the on the size of my smile when I come back from the MVP summit, you might <laughs> speculate, but I will never ever tell anything. No, right? no, never. Okay, that's true. And then safe or isn't supported as well. So there's there's a couple of things missing here. Now those those backups. If if you're talking about SQL with with DAX and you have the the, the SQL Server native backups, that's not really a problem. Right, because you back up the log every 10 minutes, every yeah. 15 minutes, depending, and you can restore them that way. The, the logs replay anyway when you boot. Uh, but if you are counting, if you're not doing that, but you're counting on your backup software, 
to handle your SQL backups, that might be an issue. So, uh, did but, you, just just a question. Yeah. So checkpoints. It's not only that you can't do checkpoints on the PMEM device, or uh, you, you can't do checkpoints for the. It's, whole yeah, it's only the PMEM device. It's okay. only the PMEM device. The rest, so the rest of your virtual machine. Okay. Is, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. If you have some but kind if, of temporary data there, that wouldn't be too bad. But if you have uh, persistent data there, what you want later to to have somewhere. Well, a, log, a log is also persistent, but you have other ways of collecting that. Yeah. So my advice is if you put the family pictures on here, because you like speed and you have the money, I don't know, uh, uh, and you don't want to get into trouble with your wife five years later because you lost the pictures of your kid yeah. when he was four years old, <laughs> you might want to find a way to back up that VM in a different way, that's natively true. inside of the guest, yeah. just to make sure you, you stay married or something. Yeah, yeah, that's, these are important things. Life migration yeah, is not nice, but I could miss that. But checkpoints, backup, and safe and restore are more actually, important. Actually, actually, this is, I, I want live migration ASAP. Of course, I wanted to, but OK. OK, go on. Anyway. anyway. Don't prevent oh. us from the from the demo, my friend. So now it's demo time, I guess. Now, <laughs> yes. now, now I have to, oh my god! Oh my god! So uh, I'll show you how to do it, but first I want to show you the finished product, right? So basically, what you're looking at here is a, uh, a machine with persistent memory. In device manager, device manager, you can see the persistent memory devices, and you see two persistent memory disks. We've got two of them. They are interleaved, so each one of those has three 16 gigabit uh, NVDIMM and modules. Mm -hmm. Now, these I have used. If I go here and I look at my little PC, I go here, here we are, and I've created my my uh, PMEM disks here. Yeah. So if you look if you look at this, right, this is my VHD PMEM. This is what I showed you in the slide. Right. So there's two of them. Mm -hmm. Those have been mapped to uh, a VM to that persistent memory controller. Now, you can look in the GUI all day long of Hyper-V Manager. You will never find it, the persistent uh, memory controller. It doesn't show up. You don't see it. It's a Hyper-V only game, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but then we have our virtual machine. And in that virtual machine, I have two persistent memory disks, as you would expect, the ones I mapped with the PowerShell commandment. And if we go into Device Manager, here they are. At this point, of course, it doesn't have a clue anymore that these are interleaved. They're virtual files, right? Yeah. The VHD PMEM disks. Now, on each of those disks, I have a tab. So I go to my I.O. meter. I run it as administrator just in case, I let it find all the nice CPUs the host has, and I load my, let's do 4K, 100%, uh, let's say, it's it's not 100% right, it's 100% reads, this is wrong, and 100% uh, sequential. Yeah. So this is Load it as good as, show as good index. as good. Yeah, in the access specifications, maybe? Yeah. Yep. So 100% read, 100% yeah. write, to show you I'm not lying. We edit it, right? Yeah, four kilobyte, 100 sequential, 100% read, right. Yeah, okay. So, what do you think? Let's kick it off? Yes, do that. You have 1.5 million IOPS there. There we go. Nice. 1.6? That's so I nice. I I'm I have lucky. maybe I have maybe a trick uh, to this get. This is this is not BAX, right? This is block level. Access. Yeah. Block, this is block volume. That's cool. this is like this is like cool. Yeah, but it's 100% read, my friend. Show me some writes but, here. This uh, is cool. What, what, yeah. What, what you need to, what you need to do now is find some customers who have a need for this. And then sit there all day long with a smile on your face watching I, this. I have a smile on my face already. But I, know, I, want, oh, I, want, I want to see some bright sea of my friends. Okay, let's let's stop this. Right? Yeah. Let's no, but it. that's very cool. Um, let, let's let's do let's do 8K. 
Yeah. 70, 70 30 read write and 70 30 sequential random. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then we okay. move, when, then we do my special test later. So you have 20. Yeah, okay. Well, you, have a, you have a special test. Yeah, I have. So here they are. So let's, let's, let's just kick it off. Oh, nice. It's not too shabby, right? No, it's not too shabby at the all. The difference isn't that big. This is another nice, nice side effect I've seen from, from uh, PMAM, is that the difference when you start doing random uh, I.O. and uh, read-write, isn't that, it's, you see how it's almost 1.5 million as well. Yeah, it's nice. It's very it, it, nice. It's, it's, it's going up. You see that? It's leveling out. Isn't that nice? Come on. The, the memory gets uh, warm now, so it's getting faster, right? <laughs> It's, come on, come on. It, 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 this is this is kind of this is kind of cool. It's very cool, yeah. This is, this is like, but do you do do you start to realize why I like RDMA as well? Of course, I because, because, if, because... if you can do that, this is this is one single VM. Yeah. A single VM with two little PMAM discs. Mm. Hmm. I hmm. I have to get those for storage bases direct. So maybe yeah, the server class nice. memory this from is, Intel. Is, Intel, if you hear is. me, I need that. <laughs> I need that to play with. Hey, that. we had fun. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> one five with thirty percent writes, my friends, and uh, it's thirty percent random. Thirty percent random. So look at that. I love it. It's it's getting faster it. and faster. That's nice. it's getting faster. If we sit here for five weeks, <laughs> we, <laughs> we reach two, two point mil, two million. Huh? No. I think for two million, you need a couple of more modules. Yeah. I think I think I think if somebody would you know give how me their old email system, yeah. I could make it go up to two million. How many how many cores did you assign to this? If twenty four uh, cores, two four. Uh, Oh, some. Okay, some. <laughs> 40, Forty-eight. Oh, you want to be really sure. <laughs> no. It, it, oh, by the way, it's uh, it's uh, these are this, these are twelve core systems, but they have hyper V threading enabled. Yeah. So if you look at the host, uh, let's give you some details here. Uh, here we go. So you, yeah, it's... I haven't I haven't played too much with high, uh, hyper threading enabled disabled yet. So. Yeah, that's cool. So can can we just try? It's uh, it's not prepared. So uh, I would like to see my usual test I'm doing at storage basis direct. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I do um, I go to the access specifications. I yeah. just take the 4K aligned 50% read. Find it 4K down. Aligned. No, no, aligned down, down, down. A little bit more down. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, take that. Yeah. Which one? This one, 50% read. What, what one? The 50% 50 read, read yeah. edit copy. Yeah. Edit copy. Yeah. I, I'm would... going to call this Carson special. No, no, no. Uh, call it 8K. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, uh, just uh, just 8, the 8K. 8, remove the, the, the brackets and the one at the end. Yes. So, okay, and, and then, and then this uh, of course, yeah, not only rename the test, so save that's it. All, that's, that's, that's all, all. I change? Yeah, that's all I change. So it's 100% random? Yes, I'm, I'm okay. a killer. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And now, if, if you are now disappointed by P, man, no, 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 no. It's, not my, it's not my fault. No, it's okay, I, I have another <laughs> tweak, but no, no, we first... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. Situ how, how do I point to point? To oh yeah, you're it's my there. fault. Okay. This is my it's test. Fault. I do it always with storage based direct. I want to see it. So this is live. If this is, if this sucks, <laughs> it's not DJ's okay. fault. It's my so fault. I'm doing yeah. okay. Yeah, do okay, and then no, uh, assign it to all the I'm workers. Gonna, I'm gonna throw I'm this to one. Remove out. this. Yeah. And then I add this one. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, it's okay. Done. Yeah, and then go, and then I will do drum another. Roll, drum roll. I have never. I mean this. This is Carson's test. I've never done this. Yeah, do I it. Do it, my friend. Go, 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 go. It's very nice. It's even. I'm nice. happy. That's more nice than your test, my friend. I this I love even more because this is my 100% random test. What what is what is the message actually we're trying to give you? It here? doesn't it doesn't matter what what I/O pattern you have, right? 
Let's let's basic, just do one meters. one more tweak. One more tweak. Stop it. Okay. Please stop it. <laughs> so then go to uh, yes, of course we have low. Uh, go please to the first uh, first thing, the disk assignment. And I think it will not it will not change anything. Right. But uh, disk assignment. Yeah. yeah. Go to the to the host to the name. And then change to ten outstanding IOs. I I think it will not matter at all. Uh, it shouldn't. Even with uh, even with all flash and VMEs, it doesn't matter that it, much. Anymore. It does. It does really. If a you, little bit, yeah. But, yeah, but if you want real maybe, perform, it, it's maybe it's maybe it's less than it used to be. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but it's fifty to one hundred percent. It's 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 huge. So uh, please do that for me. You can check the the different that, uh, one sense. or two workers. If if there is a ten now, just click of one or two workers there. Yeah, it's a ten. Yeah, fantastic. You're good. Just, yeah, and just kick it off. First, you have to start it, right? Well, well. <laughs> so we had 1.5. My, my, my remark would be it's very stable. <laughs> yeah, but it's going down Let's now. So it has problems with the... Uh, yeah, okay. No, it's, it's going up again. You think so? Yeah, look at it. Yeah, okay, you're right. So it's amazing. 1.5, 1 1.4, 1.5 million IOPS. We have a... 100% random, 50% read, 50% write. That's amazing. That's really that's really amazing. So now next stop would be having a storage basis direct design with <laughs> storage class memory and NVMe. So basically, we, 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 if we get anybody there, right? has, has, has old persistent memory hardware lying around, <laughs> they want to get rid we of it. We take it. We take it. We, we, we will uh, care about it. And, uh, and we have 1.5 again. <laughs> yes, that's great. Fantastic. So Isn't it nice? The, the I, I really do don't, one, don't matter. I, I, do, I usually do only one out and uh, one outside because I want I want no cues to really show the real performance. Because it's, it's, it's like, it's like crazy. This is great. It's like, it's I, I love it. So this is, I think this is a nice, a nice adding ending of our showcast. Oh? Um, so glad <laughs> that we. <laughs> I'm, afraid, I'm afraid it's not gonna get any better. <laughs> One. No, no, I, I don't want to finish the show cast at all. No, I mean this one. This one is a nice ending here. So I'm happy, and this is Hyper-V. I like it. Um, this is I'm, what they call quitting while you're ahead. We've got uh, one and a half million high ups. I'm, 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 I'm out of here before it all stops. We start the show cast in five years again if there is a new technology involving. <laughs> Oh, that's it's a persistent uh, uh, cache, <laughs> persistent processor cache in the gigabytes. Okay, no, that's cool. This is, this is really, 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 really. It really, is. Really, it is. Really nice technology. Okay, did I you? absolutely, I absolutely love it. So, uh, Didier, I will see you very soon in on the other uh, other side of the pond uh, in. I would Redmond, hope so. In Redmond, yeah. If nothing yes. happens with the flights, or I get ill, or so. So uh, we will chat with the people in Redmond about this. We we can't talk about that afterwards, but at least we will chat a bit with them. <laughs> and there will be other chats. And uh, yeah, there I, will uh, be a lot. Of chats, I think yeah, there will. Uh, so. there's, there's 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 other things happening as well. We need to discuss in Redmond, of course. That's, that's so and, true. Uh, and 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 you know. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I get this remark by people like, "Why are you doing this? Because everything is going to the cloud." Well, no. People are investing in this. There are needs still in the world uh, for high performance virtual virtualization, high performance hardware, high performance networking. If you do that, uh, Azure Stack. Yeah. You can say, okay, it's Azure in a box, true, but it's hardware and it's Hyper V. So and it's on premises, it, yeah. And it's on premises, right? Or 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 in your submarine, whatever model yeah. you want, or in your or in the back of your of your SUV if it's a organized. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and Didier Cloud is an option, and it's a good one for many, many, many workloads. But it's not the option for everything. So I think there will be uh, for some times we will have great stuff on premises like this one. And uh, I, I my, I'm just happy that. I'm actually doing this on physical hardware because yeah. I would not like to pay for the Azure bill of what I just did. <laughs> and you, 
I, you won't be able to do that and show us the hardware and everything, right? So, okay, but sure. now this is a good time to finish this showcast. Uh, I'll, so you, it was a very good one. Some, the you demos, want to make some? Uh, some? Uh, oh, that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you like that, it's it's the German version, but I can translate it. I also <laughs> have the English version. Show the English one. We are doing an an, an international uh, um, showcast. So I I do a lot of webinars in English and in in uh, German, but of course. Uh, the English one are more interesting for this audience, I, I assume at least. So if you are interested about in, in Storage Basis Direct, in Azure Stack, in uh, some features in Windows Server, Hyper-V, DD and I, we did, uh, we did recently one together about uh, um, RDMA. Uh, that was yes. also a very nice one. Um, go to this, uh, this URL, hyper-v-server.de, and then lp-webinar-archive-english. You have to give me your full name and your email address, and then you can, then you can see all the webinars I've done so far. And the RDMA thingy, I think you have it on your blog, or will have, right? The blog, it's on my blog. So you no, can, it's, it's you there, can it's even, there. There's a link to it. It's yeah. embedded in the, it's embedded in the... Yeah. You can even watch it without giving me your email address and your name. But only on my blog. Only on Didier's blog. Uh, and the, there's not the archive, so you you see only the the webinar we did. So that's nice. And uh, maybe we talk about the CDC. Um, that's a, a conference that takes place in Germany near Frankfurt in Hanau. Um, it's yes. uh, in the end of May, at the 21st and 22nd of May. And we have a lot of MVPs there, and it's a technical um, technical conference, uh, uh, 200, 300, 400 uh, level uh, um, presentations. Uh, Didier is an all-time speaker now. You are there for the fourth time. I speak there always because it's my conference. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, And uh, we had so far very, very nice um, feedback from the attendees. So we always do uh, an old-fashioned uh, paper feedback, and we give some nice presents at the end, so we get a lot of feedback. And uh, all over all, the last, the last uh, edition from 2018 had a rating of 8.15 on a, on a scale from 1 to 9, where 9 is amazing and 1 is... It sucks. So uh, <laughs> I went over 230 uh, feedback uh, feedback um, letters back. So it's not five people gave us amazing numbers. A lot of them gave us. Amazing yeah, and there, there are the, the attendees are absolutely fabulous. So it's very nice to talk to them because they are all very hands-on techno technologists. Yeah. So you should get if the discussions you can have with them uh, are are actually quite of interesting, and you can learn a lot. And again, all my fellow speakers there are kind of top of the, in their areas of expertise. So yeah. it's one big learning experience for me as well, because it ties everything together. It ties on-premises together. It ties hybrid together. It ties the public cloud together. And all these different areas of expertise take, uh, make, make it such a great, uh, great event. And uh, that's okay that everybody has their own expertise because what what was it you need 200 or 300 or 400 engineers to explain windows yeah, maybe. so if so if you if you want to explain on premises hybrid and public cloud how many do you need i mean yeah. thousands yeah I, I maybe want to mention two more things so uh, it it's named cloud and data center conference but there is a focus on data centers so on premises we have around 30% of public cloud sessions and the rest is hybrid and on-premises. And uh, I think we are the only conference in Germany, at least, who is focusing still on on-premises. Microsoft is doing a lot of cloud, and that's good. But uh, we have a lot of attendees who want to hear about stuff that is not in the cloud because they are huge. They have huge investments in on-premises, and they want to go on there. Yeah, and not not just that. I mean, uh, there is there is there are just so many workloads still today yeah. that are so tied to on-premises. It's uh, it's not just uh, it's not just having a board meeting and deciding oh we're going to move to the public cloud. Make it so. And uh, zero budget impact, zero workload impact. I mean, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, the good thing is, uh, if you take care of your on-premises 
legacy, so to speak, environment, uh, this is how you get to do your t digital transition and transformation mm. to a more cloud-enabled environment. You don't get there by just saying, oh, this is the shit of yesterday, just throw it away, I don't want to deal with it anymore. It's very easy to say, by throwing away what your company is running on. So you need to maintain this, you need to keep this modern, so you don't lose out on capabilities, you don't lo lose out on features and uh, security. And whilst you're doing that, you do your dig digital transition to whatever need you have, whether it's hybrid or public mm. or uh, private with Azure Stack, for example. But don't don't worry, your skill sets are still very valid and you will be evolving over time. But this is not a flip the bit and we're, and we're done here. Yeah, that's true. And that's something I, I, I miss sometimes uh, as a nuance in the, in a lot of discussions I have with companies. It's, it's like, oh, we want to move to the cloud. And what do, you, what do you want to do? Oh, we're going to move to IIS. I say, really? Why? Mm -hmm. Are you that's happy? Is, is, your, is your data center burning down? No. So what, what, what do you have to gain? If, if you are going to make the investment of going to the cloud, you might want to serverless and service fabric or in uh, in a platform as a service and not as much as putting a VM from one location to another location of course every environment is different needs are different but I, I like to have a more balanced discussion about all this and the nice thing is that the cloud and data center conference gives me that yeah so I want to John just one more thing there is a there are two community events in uh, the day before the cloud and data center conference you oh, yes. spoke there already uh, also in the last year I'll speak there again I yeah, think I found my subject Have you found it what is it PMM? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's on the 20th on Monday and uh, it's the Hyper-V community uh, and the hybrid cloud community. So if you are more the hybrid type, thinking about combining the public cloud and on-premises, the hybrid cloud community is more your thing and the Hyper-V community is, is caring about the old stuff like Hyper-V, failover cluster, storage spaces direct, uh, PMEM. Yeah, so come there, you can change between the tracks. So um, if you want to, this is a free event, the communities and the cloud and data center conference. There is a price for that. We are at 499 euros for a lot of knowledge. So, so but now let's end this, or? Huh? We have such a, such a run today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Goodbye, Didier. Carsten. Nice uh, talking to you again, and we will do our Veeam thing soon, right? See maybe maybe, maybe in, in, in May or so. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>